Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I want to pick up and I guess maybe do a part two of what I was talking about yesterday. But more of that, what I want to do is zone in on some words that we just cling to, to, and watch this. We hold on to these relatively new words that did not exist till after the 1400s, most of them in the 1500s, so that we can hold on to our religious system and defend it. And guys, we're just wrong. We've been taught wrong, and I'm hoping that someone will be blessed by opening their eyes to how we've been led off track of what God's original purpose was for his ecclesia or his ruling council, his legislative uh, council, Uh, of people, his legislative assembly, we are here to be a light to the world and to teach them about Jesus, okay? So let me keep going here. Yesterday, I got a little bit toward my ending. Uh, I had to hurry up. I talked about pastors, plural. In the original manuscripts, the word pastor never existed, okay? Uh, The word shepherds was there. And there is a major difference in a pastor and a shepherd. Think about this. When you think about a pastor, you think about someone who is set in an office over other people, getting paid, okay? A shepherd works with another group of human beings. It's never one shepherd in the field. Shepherds, plural, to oversee a flock, okay? It was never supposed to be one man on a stage or a woman. It's not supposed to be one woman on a stage. I've seen that. Uh, She was extremely controlling over everyone sitting under her. See, that's wrong, wrong, wrong. That don't even line up with Jesus. Okay, I'm going to keep pushing here. Uh, But see, it was supposed to be about a group of overseers to feed the flock, not fleece them and tell them you owe us money because we're full-time paid clergy that you should take care of. See, our Bibles have slowly changed to that to support a religious hierarchy system that was never in original manuscripts. Now, some of y'all can go right on and just click off because it's easier sometimes to stay in deception than to uh, open our hearts to truth, okay? The unknown for us gets a little bit scary sometimes, but I'm telling you, I've studied this stuff. So today, what I want to do, I talked about that word pastors being plural because there's safety in numbers when you have overseers. One person has a moral failure, it's like dominoes in a church. But if there's five or six people showing equal input, spiritual guidance, biblical maturity, That one person falling away doesn't cause a domino effect, okay? Let's keep going. The word deacon was never used before the 12th century. That's in the 1300s, guys. And it was always the word servant or one who serves, okay? And this is very curious for those of you that believe that the King James Bible is the only inspired book. You are being deceived by religious spirits because you have had blinders put on you and your heart can't receive truth. I'm going to give you some words in the King James that never existed and have been made up. The word unicorn is a fantasy animal that was made up and put in, okay? Here's another thing. In the King James, where it says deacon, it's always talking about men leading over, lording over other people. Anytime that the word servant, that same Greek word is used as a servant, they have applied it to women. Now watch what happens, okay? So women are good to serve, but men are given offices and positions of over other people, okay? Now see, what I'm showing you is that we have been taught to see into this submissive rulership to men through a lot of writings, okay? In the earlier manuscripts, these words had not even been invented yet. 
so they are not in the original manuscripts. Okay, let me keep going with elder. Elder is a pretty new word, too. It's the 12th century, guys, okay? It was originally one who oversees... Yes, one who oversees, and all they are is more spiritually mature, maybe even more biblically mature and grounded, and they guide people into maturity. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about, I've talked about pastor, deacon, elder. Uh, let's talk about the word apostle. This is very interesting. You know, what we see in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 is apostles and prophets and evangelists and uh, pastors now, okay, and watch. You'll see business cards elevating people to a rulership, rule over other people. I'm higher up on the ladder than you are, okay? So it's, you, you, it's like they have to have that title, and that was not in the original manuscripts. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that word apostle. The word apostle came about in the 12th century, Okay, and I'm going to read Galatians chapter 1. Uh, here is what uh, King James says, Paul, comma, an apostle. Okay, did you know that's not actually the original manuscript wording in that? What it says is, my name is Paul. I am Paul, one who has been sent by God. Okay, see that word apostle was stuck in there so they don't have to keep writing out that phrase, one who is sent by God, everywhere that is used. So they came up with one word so it makes it easier to write it and you're just not, you know, the Bible's not this thick anymore, right? Okay, so let me read to you what this means, okay? It, here it is in the Passion. It says, my name is Paul and I have been commissioned as an apostle. And then they got a footnote for apostle. And if you go down and read it, it says apostle means one who is sent on a mission or an ambassador. Now let me read it to you the way it would have been written in the Greek manuscript or even the Aramaic. The Passion uses a lot of Aramaic and they come together and bring clarity between the Aramaic and Greek and mine out a lot of things, guys. Here we go. My name is Paul and I have con been commissioned as a as one who is sent on a mission by God. Got it? Okay, so that word right there was never used before. Now here's another very interesting thing that I'm going to wander off in today. Did you know, uh, I'm going to say this one, I'm going to skip down and do some more. I want to talk about the word physician in Luke chapter 5 verse 31. Let's see if I can find that if I saved it. Uh, Luke chapter 5 verse 31 says that the well, the people who are healthy, do not need a physician or a doctor. And did you know that is not what the manuscripts say? The word physician did not exist in that day. That is a word that we use to describe what they were trying to say. Let me explain to you what the word physician is. The word physician is one who can heal. Got it? Jesus is the great physician, the great healer. Now, the word physician in our dictionaries say one educated, clinically experienced, and licensed to practice medicine. So see, if we apply our word physician to Jesus, that's not who Jesus is. Jesus was not educated by the medical society. He is not clinically exper experienced in those teachings to get his license, license to practice medicine. Uh, so, see, we that new word makes us think, and I've heard people say, well, God made physicians. God talks about physicians. No, in the original manuscripts, it says one who can heal you. Oh, yes, now we're getting to think about this. Now, I just used the word medicine. I need to talk to you about that. And this is the heart of what I want you to get today. Right here, I want you to get this if you don't get anything else. The word medicine, okay? The word medicine, a substance that is used in treating a disease or relieving pain. And it is usually in the form of a pill, a potion, or a liquid. Now, I want you to understand something here. I'm going to read this to you in Proverbs in what are updated. When I say updated, guys, I'm talking about 
uh, Bibles that were written in the, around the 1300s or newer. Okay, 1300 or newer. We have had words put in and over time more words and more words and more words and it has absolutely changed what your Bibles originally wanted you to understand. I'm going to read you uh, what it says. Uh, I believe the King James Bible says something like this. I don't have it pulled up. But um, a good medicine uh, brings healing. Let's see. Uh, a, a good heart or something like that. A cheerful heart is like a good medicine. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't have my King James pulled up. But let me read to you what the literal Young's literal translation says. A rejoicing heart does good to the body and a smitten spirit drieth the bone. Okay, so right here in the original uh, Hebrew, the word medicine did not exist. The word medicine came about and was invented in the 13th century. The Bible does not say taking pills and medicine is good. God did not say that Man added a word in to shorten. They may not have meant anything by it. I'm not accusing people. But they shortened a phrase into one word of their understanding. Okay, so let's go back to what the Bible said. And let me read it to you in the Passion. It says, A joyful, cheerful heart brings healing to both body and soul. But the one whose heart is crushed struggles with sickness and depression. I'm going to read it in the expanded. It says, uh, brings healing. A, a happy heart brings healing, but a broken spirit drains your strength and dries up the bone. Okay, so what we have to understand is that Jesus was not promoting physicians who use medicines. When he said in Luke 5.31, it is not the well people who need someone to heal them, it is the sick people who are, that word sick right there is evil. Those who are hurt by evil is the one who needs to be healed. Jesus was not talking about medicines and doctors. And I understand I'm challenging a lot of people right now. And there's a little button down there. You can just go click and keep on living in that false paradigm. Okay? Because it will only be to your own hurt. Where am I going with this right here today? We have been lied to by the world, the world system, and the world financial money-making system. We have been told to run to a doctor, one who is trained to write out little pieces of paper, and you go across from the temple to the temple mart, right? The pharmacy, and get your healing. And sometimes those little prescriptions, those potions and mixtures, they're poison. They are controlled poison. Now watch. What it does is it forces a body to do what the person is or the doctor is telling it it must do. Okay. And sometimes our body doesn't need to be forced into anything else. That's why it's sick. The body needs to be rested. The body needs to get something in it that we're not giving it. And sometimes we need to quit putting into it things that does not belong. We call a lot of things food that God is sitting in heaven going, wow, they think that's food and they're putting that in their body, but they think they're going to walk in divine health. Okay, I'm giving you a lot to think about. The next one I want to bring up before I close out today is the word cancer. Did you know the word cancer did not exist until the 14th century. Yes, it was in the late 1500s before that word ever came about. Guys, why am I teaching you this today? Because I love you. I love you and I want you to be set free of religious lies. And I'm going to tell you, now, this Bible teacher, I'm going to close now because I've done my time here today. But let me close with this. I am not telling you to throw your medicines away. I'm not telling you not to go to a doctor if you are very ill, in serious conditions. And if I assure you, friends, if I get hurt or something, I want them to take me so I can keep my blood in my body. Because the Word says that the life is in the blood. I have to keep my blood in my body or I can't function here in the earth any longer, okay? 
But I am telling you that there is a better way, and we should pray and seek a better way, God's way. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.